so what I'm actually going to talk about today is I'm going to lead on from what Mike said and I'm going to basically tell you about what I see as the future of our grid. Um, and for the, the faster that is going to come, it will come faster when we get the tariffs right, exactly as Mike said. That is our greatest challenge towards getting to our energy democratisation and it's the one we have right now. I'm also going to tell you that it's too late. How quickly, how slowly we do it, it doesn't matter. That train has left the station and I'm going to tell you why. So first of all, solar is the future of energy. I'm not just saying that because I'm preaching to solar citizens here. This, in my opinion, is just fact. Better technology will win in the end. So if you look at that in Australia, as you can see, we've now got 1.5 million, I think we've heard that number a lot of times, five gigawatts, huge amounts of residential solar. 20% of homes have solar, or 20% of people are living under solar. What Bloomberg New Energy says is that in fact, this is going to continue and accelerate. So this is specifically for Australia. And what it's driven by here, you can see, is residential solar and flexible capacity. To get there, we do need the distributors and the networks to change their tariffs. The fact is, everyone in this room and all the homes around Australia are going to drive that. They will follow. They won't lead, they can't lead. They will follow and everyone here is going to make them follow. And Bloomberg says this, the IEA says this, AMO says this, the Minerals Council even knows this is true. When, that's right. How do we know this is true? Because we see what's happening. So Tesla announced their battery last year. They'd never built one, they just announced a pretty picture. Elon Musk got up there and said some things, no marketing. How long do you think it took him to sell a billion dollars worth of his batteries. Anybody want to guess? Two weeks, two weeks with no marketing, no product, hasn't even built the factory yet. He sold a billion dollars worth. Guy's a genius. <laughs> he, he didn't do it because it's a great product. It's no better than a heap of other products. He did it because of the demand. And guess where the demand is strongest? Guess where they're all coming? Australia. Um, this suburb, anybody recognise this suburb? <laughs> anybody recognise anything about this suburb? Got a lot of, so every one of those circles is a solar system. You probably know this suburb, it's Caloundra. Is it? It's yeah, yeah. Why? It's clean, it's simple, it's cheap and we like it. Maybe we're doing it because we're sticking it to the man, maybe we're doing it because it's good for the environment. Maybe we're doing it for financial reasons. We're doing it for all of those reasons. People love solar. That train has left the station. Every solar system will have battery. Every battery will have a solar system. That'll come. That's just a market mechanism. Landlords, if, if you can do it cheaper and better, people will do it that way. Exactly, it'll come. There is, however, a problem. Now, first of all, a confession, I run a company called Solar Analytics. I'm about to give you a shameless plug. <laughs> so for those of you who don't like advertisements, go look at your mobile phone or something. Okay, there is a problem. Solar systems are great. However, there's one there. You have no idea if it's working properly. Absolutely none. Um, I found this back out in 20, 2011 when I put one on my own roof. I spent $1,200 getting the best solar monitoring there was on the market. The next day I sat in my office, engineer, 15 years of PV experience, not many people know more about solar than I do. I pulled up the data, I had no clue. <laughs> I had no idea how it was working. So we formed a company to fix that problem. I couldn't tell you when it needed cleaning. I couldn't tell you how much I was losing due to shading. My neighbour was just building an extension. Was that going to cause a big problem for me? I had no idea. Inverter failure. There might be some inverters around in Australia that have over 100% failure rate. Think about it. They're under warranty. You can get them replaced for free if you know about it. I've talked to people personally who've had the inverter off for two years and they've been on a 60 cent feed-in tariff. Thousands of dollars it costs them. 
It didn't work. Basically, they're throwing away money. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of reasons why your solar system won't work. Our purpose as a company, we're all solar believers at our company. We just, we want the world to be powered by solar energy. We want to be part of that future where 50% of the world's energy or more is generated by locally produced solar energy. So that's our purpose, and that, well, the way we do that is by maximising the value that you get from your solar system. So we do this, we put in a little monitor, I've got one here if anyone wants to have a look at it, and we monitor your live data. By doing this, we can tell you lots of interesting things about how much you're using solar, do you need to fix it, whereabouts in your house are you using the energy, we can help you diagnose faults for you, tell you exactly what wrong, what you need to do, help you shift your load and tell you when is the right time to install batteries. Because if you're on a 44 cent tariff, now is not the right time to install batteries. If you're in New South Wales and you're about to lose your tariff, yeah, it might well be a good time next year to put it in. But we can tell you exactly based on your particular personal circumstances. Okay, my plug's over now. Um, you can all pay attention again now. The battery boom, it is coming. It absolutely is coming. Why is it coming? Well, I'll tell you why it's coming. Because all these people believe it's coming. These companies don't spend billions of dollars for altruistic reasons. They're not doing it because they believe in climate change. They're not doing it because they're good people. They're doing it because they want to make a lot of money. That means they want to sell a lot of batteries. The only way they can sell a lot of batteries is to make them cheaper and better. It will happen. Mobile phones were thousands of dollars to start with. Now they give them away free in your cornflake packets, just about. <laughs> right? They can make them for 50 bucks. Batteries are coming and they're going to get cheaper and better. Why? Because of this. First of all, I want to apologise. I don't know what's wrong with the Apple, but the pictures that are supposed to hide don't hide. Uh. So if the slides are confusing, I'm blaming the technician, sorry, Reese. <laughs> Works fine everywhere else. <laughs> no, no, it's not you, Mike. Just want to say it's, <laughs> it's the technology. Um, but basically, look, it's not just Tesla, um, it's, it's Mercedes, it's everyone's getting into electric cars. And if you put an electric car in your home, well, guess what? You've already got storage. And if you've got storage in your home, well, guess what? It's cheaper, smarter, simpler simply better around to have storage solar on your roof. People will do it. Um, I know you showed the graph that said solar is decreasing. Um, I'm going to accuse you of doing the graph slightly wrong because the last point was down because it was December. We're always low in December. If you actually look at the trend over the last couple of years, basically it's flat. There is a very slight decrease. We're doing 150,000 systems every year in Australia and that will continue and probably pick up again. Um, solar is absolutely the future. But there is a problem with the tariffs, as Mike mentioned, and that is having a flat tariff is things. Having a flat tariff is not even vaguely reflective of what it costs to produce the elect to produce the electricity and to have it available. As you said, your boat is only um, available nine months of the year the boat is empty. So if you're running an intelligent system, what do you do? You make it cheaper at those times of the year when people don't want to get on the boat. And that's what you do with their electricity system. And that's what they want to do all over the place. There's a problem with that though. There are in fact four types of energy meters. You might not know this, Mike. This might be news to you. <laughs> there are four types. <laughs> okay, you know the first one. That's a basic meter, a basic accumulation meter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. How, how many meters do you have in Queensland? Uh, I'm in Queensland, Yep, so you've got about two and a half million, right? How many of them are these basic meters that can only tell you after three months the total amount of energy you used? You can watch them going backwards. Oh, that's because you've got solar oh, on the roof. Don't, don't tell, don't tell them that. <laughs> Don't give him your address. <laughs> Two, yeah. All this one can tell you, you can't do any sort of intelligent tariff on this because all it can tell you is every three months when the person comes around and reads your meter, 
the total amount of energy you used. It has to be a flat amount. Then you've got the interval meter. Yeah, the interval meter. The interval meter is a little bit smarter. It will collect data every half an hour. The problem is it just keeps the data. So the guy's still got to come around every three months and measure it for you. So then you can have a time of use tariff, but you can't see it live. They don't know what's happening and they've still got to send someone around to get it. Then you've got the smart meter. They've rolled out, what, 800,000 of these or millions of these in Victoria. It hasn't been a big success. Um, but they do exactly the same thing as an interval meter, except they also have communications in them. So they have a modem. So they can send you the data or send the electricity retailer the data typically once a day and they'll get you half hour data. That's all well and good, but it still doesn't help do anything smart. What you actually need is an intelligent meter. <laughs> what an in colour is your shirt? I, I don't know. <laughs> Coincidence. It's a pure coincidence. Um, what an intelligent meter does, what an intelligent meter does, it gives you live data, live five second data. So you can see what your appliances are doing. You can see what's happening now, not yesterday. This is not just designed to send you a bill. This is designed to help you better manage your electricity so that companies like us, like Reposit Power, like Habitat, like all of them, can offer you services via your smartphone to better optimise your use of energy. They can give you advice. They can help you control your energy. They can help you sell it to your neighbour. They can help you sell it down the street. They can help you sell it back to the grid. They can help you consume it on site. They can tell you when to move your pool pump. All those sorts of things. To do that, you need an intelligent meter. Hey, look, it worked. Faded. Um, so what does all this mean? Oh, just, sorry, going back to this. Um, Oh, 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 here we go. How many of those two and a half million metres, Mike, are basic metres? Oh, they're disappearing. Okay, quickly. <laughs> in South East Queensland, two and a half million of those, two and a half thousand, two and a half million metres, there are about 700,000 million one thousand. Yep. Every solar installation in South East Queensland since, nine, since 2009 has actually got exactly what you said. Precisely. Yeah. 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 Residentially, just talking residentially, my numbers are basically 99% are basic, 1% are interval, and 0% are smart. Actually, communicating where you can actually see the data. Yeah. Correct. So the dumbest of the dumb. Basically, sorry, Queensland. <laughs> New South Wales, very similar statistics. We, have, we are so far from a smart grid, it's not funny. However, we will get there. We will get there, and we'll get there because batteries will drive the change. They will force the change. And it will be driven by people like you in the room. Right now, over 90% of our energy, 95% is generated remotely, transmitted over the power lines and to the homes. Our future grid, and you're going to talk about this in a minute, our future grid is actually going to have more than 50% of our energy generated locally and sold locally. And the interesting thing about that exactly as Mike said is that in our future grid, our local energexes and so on who are distributing the energy, they've still got a business model they can still sell the energy from you to your neighbour and they still make a decent clip. The only ones who are really dying dinosaurs who are gone are the remote coal-fired generators. 